What's going on guys? This is Ryan and uh, Ian and we're going to talk to you about some kayak stuff and we're going to do a Q&A for you today. Excellent. What are the essentials to kayak fishing? Life jacket for sure. Absolutely. I wouldn't go on the water without it. If, especially if you're going out solo, but really just in any, any condition, you know. Got a few options to choose from these Mustang ones. Um, the Coast Guard uses these, so you know they're effective. They're a little bit on the pricier side though, but Solquist makes life jackets specifically for fishing. A little more bulkier, but you do got a lot of pockets to work with, so you can put your fishing gear, your cell phone, just some other essentials, so easy access. And yep. I'd say one of the key things about kayak fishing is storage and organization, so definitely, definitely get yourself a good life jacket. Making the most of what you got. You don't want your mom looking for you one day. Keep wear your life jacket even in the summertime, yeah. especially if you're out in the ocean. If you're on like a freshwater pond or something like that, you can get away with not having one, but if you're out in the ocean, please wear one. Yeah, and just keep in contact with people so people know when you're getting there, when you should be getting off the water. So mm -hmm. if anything does happen, they've got like a time frame to, uh, to consider, you know? Exactly. Uh, next thing, uh, landing net. Uh, a lot of kettle ponds on the Cape. Get yourself a good net. You don't need anything too large, especially for um, big bass and trout. Um, I like the rubber nets because uh, they use a lot of lures or travel hooks. They don't get caught in a net. And it's also better for the fish. Um, I think we have another uh, larger net over there. Yeah, we got a bunch of, yeah, we got a little bit larger size. This would do like your black sea bass. You guys start getting a little bit saltwater species. Mm -hmm. um, also fish gripper for your blues. Keeping that thing from getting in the kayak with you with treble hooks splashing all around is always uh, kind of nice to keep good control over the fish. For sure, definitely. You guys spoke about keeping your tackle organized. Mm. How do you do that? So I uh, only exclusively, regardless if I'm in the surf or in the kayak, I only use these Mighty Fish uh, sealed trays. They're really nice. They keep all your tackle dry, keep your hooks from getting rusty. And they also have three clips. So. When eventually these things do break, um, you could lose two of them and still an effective tray. Um, we've got Plano kayak storage in the back here. You can hold it, you know, probably six trays in here, a bunch of terminal tackle, um, even backup reels if something happens. You know, you got Definitely. everything covered. For just like other stuff like your wallet or phone, Plano has a waterproof case. A little on the pricier side for 30 bucks, but I mean, it floats and it keeps all the water out. And with salt water, you don't want that getting into your phone or yeah. other essentials, especially your car keys. I know, I've definitely put a couple iPhones to the bottom of the ocean, so 30 yep. bucks is definitely cheaper than like 500 it's bucks for a new phone. Definitely a worthy investment. And then you that. can't get the pictures to brag about the fish you catch. <laughs> got some big fish, no pictures, because phones in the kayak somewhere, but I'll keep it organized. With the 106 uh, PDL, they do have a little storage container with um, the pedal drive system in it, so it does make things a little easier, so you can put your phone, keys, wallet in there, and if you do tip over, you don't have to worry about it getting wet, but that doesn't really happen with the um, PDL, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Yeah, it's definitely, um, I have a 10.6 PDL, I love it, I use it every week. Um, and I do like to have like, you know, small storage. You can just have a couple backup lures that you know you're gonna change up and keep it easy access for yourself. Favorite rods for both saltwater and freshwater fishing from the kayaks? Ooh, that's, a, that's a good one. Um, you got honestly a lot of options. Um, one of my favorite rods is the Mojo Yak by St. Croix. Um, you can pair this up with a 3K or 4K Stratic. Um, this is, I got two of these rods personally. I have one for saltwater and freshwater. This one's more of my uh, saltwater outfit. It goes to three fourths of an ounce. Um, the reason I like this rod is it's long and you need a longer rod for kayak fishing. A lot of people think you need a short rod for kayak fishing, but I like, I prefer a longer rod, honestly. Um, but what makes this rod unique is it has a very short butt. So when a fish goes around yeah. the front of the kayak, you're able to move them out a little bit. And it's just more control, honestly, I find. Yeah, I definitely like to have a sort of butt section. Um, I use a Shimano Compre. This is a relatively sort butt section for my freshwater like bass all around usage. And then um, I do have a Shimano Terramar, a bunch of G Loomis rods, all relatively short. I like it to be, um, you know, a couple inches short of my elbow for general like overall usage, whether the kayak or not. But um, yeah, I like a shorter butt section, something around seven, seven, six. Yeah. I have a Star Plasm rod, it's another good rod to use. Um, Tsunami Carbon Shield also makes a really nice rod. Um, 
For bait casting setups for like freshwater, the Mojo Bass by St. Croix is another excellent choice. And we're gonna get into that and think in the next question. So fellas, what do we think? Spinning or bait casting? I'm not gonna lie, I'm spinner all day. Spinner all day, but that being said, Tranks 401 got my biggest striper ever, period, period. Like all the days of the canal, I don't care. This thing got my biggest one ever um, on the kayak. Use them for bait. You know, when you're going for live eels or uh, chunking mac, anything with uh, some serious weight on it, I go bait caster. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not really casting them that much. You're just kind of like free spooling it, thumbing it with your finger so it doesn't backlash like crazy. And that works great. I personally, I'm gonna break this down a little bit by species uh, for stripers. If I'm targeting specific, like really big stripers, I'll use a bait casting setup like um, an accurate valiant. Um, but if I'm targeting inshore stripers that like slat size fish, I'll use spinning gear. Um, for largemouth, I'll use both. I'm a more finesse presentation spinning rod. But if I'm using um, giant swim baits, um, Cape Cod, one of the best things about the Cape, um, a lot of people don't know about, is the largemouth bass fisher we have here. Um, the, one of the reasons for that is the herring runs to enter these lakes. Um, they get the bass significantly larger than a lot of places, it's even. Even down south, a lot of people don't know about that, so mm. definitely like using a bait casting for those swim baits for sure. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Corrado, Shimano Corrado. Corrado. Long time. Definitely good. Standby. SLX, another good choice. Yeah, for 100 bucks, can't beat the SLX. No, sir. What is the best salt world to fish and kayak on a budget? One so, of Predator MXs, you know, you're getting it for a thousand bucks. Um, when I do say fishing, I honestly, just wholeheartedly, I would not buy an on-pedal drive kayak for, for fishing. It makes such a big difference being able to fish and steer, especially if you're in current. If you're chasing Albies or Benito, you need that pedal drive system. It just makes it's just a big difference. And I do feel like, um, a, and a little bit of it is, uh, is safety too, you know? Mm -hmm. You're going to get really tired um, paddling around, doing a lot of these salt water, like even minorly offshore. If you get any wind conditions changes, um, I feel like you're going to be in a safer position. You know, nice wide kayak, very stable. Um, you know, it can make the difference for safety out there in salt water. As far as Old Town goes, the salty um, 12 foot, it's a thinner kayak than like the, um, the Sportsman or Top Water. And I think that's one of the better kayaks you can buy for chasing Albies Benito and actually going. A little further offshore just because it's a little faster and it's also the cheapest one at nineteen hundred dollars so you guys both run the top water sportsman 106 pdls yes yep. how has your experience been so far it's pretty good it uh it elevated my fishing game massively you know um i lucked out being in a play here you know phil's looking out for the homies um <laughs> but to be totally honest i use it all the time and it's nice. I feel like it's a good compromise between freshwater, saltwater for weight. You know, a lot of these ponds you can back. I've got a Grand Cherokee. I can back my vehicle right down to the water's edge. I don't need to use a trailer. Um, and anytime you make it easier for yourself, you're going to use it more. Exactly. So I got a I got a Subaru Crosstrek. I have that kayak, the same kayak he has, on the top of my car. It's a little heavy to get up there, especially because I don't have a elevator. But um, you put a blanket over the back and just slide up there. It's not a big deal. But um, yeah, as, as far as us, uh, me and um, Ian, we, we love our kayaks. Um, I think one of the greatest things that I just discovered recently when I first got is just how effective it is for uh, fishing actually for smallmouth. You're able to creep up on the smallmouth, especially when they're on beds. It's, it makes a big difference. I caught more smallmouth this year than I ever have in my life. And breaking albies too. Being able to have a rod in your hand, being able to keep your eyes on the fish. Um, if they're moving, you can adjust. Uh, it just, yeah, it just really steps it up. Also, you know? just for like a lot of, a lot of people don't realize this. You, I mean, with a kayak, you can't cover as much ground as let's say a boat. But when Albies and Benitos are breaking and a boat runs up on them, they're gonna get, they're gonna push it back down to the water. Yeah. But um. No, I definitely well, had multiple days where uh, you know you probably have 20 boats out in an area, and mm -hmm. I'm out fishing um, probably four to one just because of the that the spook factor. factor. Yeah, yeah, the spook factor. If you got a Yamaha on the back. You got more noise than I do, so. Correct. <laughs> For sure. How do you rig your kayak when you're out in the salt water? There's, um, there's a few ways you can rig your 
basically your, basically your boat. Um, I keep it pretty simple for the most part. I have, what, one of the nice thing about these kayaks is they have a rail system. So I'll have a fish finder on one rail mount and then I'll have another rod holder that's out to the side for trolling for another one. Um, I don't have an anchor line on mine. Um, I will use though, the Scotty anchor. It's basically pre-rigged, it's got a tiny little anchor in it, nothing crazy. I just really will only use this for fresh water if I'm like want to concentrate on one spot. Um, you just tie it to a rope and you don't want to use anything too heavy because you don't want to fall over and I've seen that happen before. So yeah, definitely use a small anchor, just a rope. That's pretty much how I rig it. Um, like we talked about earlier, the tackle box in the back, the Plano. If I'm live bait fishing with eels or shiners, I'll have a Yeti bucket back there. Um, the reason why I have a Yeti bucket is it's a little more insulated. It keeps the shiners cool if I'm a, if it's a hot day. I'm also this may this may sound a little crazy, but um, I have the gray bucket, so it's a little darker, and I feel like that's a little better at keeping those uh, shiners and eels or whatever bait you're using a little darker. I think that makes the bait stand out a little more in the water. Just my yeah. personal opinion. I uh, I just definitely like to keep things clean and simple in front of me. Um, whether I've got like my pliers and like the little side pockets or um, my fish gripper. I'd like to keep them clipped, just in case I bump something, they're not going over and going in the drink. Yeah, um, yeah and I'd maybe keep a tray underneath the seat just for easy accessibility too. Um, yeah, just making most of the storage that you've got and keeping everything easy and in front of you. The best paddle holder to get it out of the way quicker when you find a fish. Scotty safety leash, that's all you really need. Um, for a lot of my gear, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll put floats on it, um, but it's hard that they're hard to find. The Scotty leash is a really good tool to just make sure everything's not gonna fall over, basically. And if you think you're not gonna fall over at some point, you will. Maybe the kayak won't flip, but I mean, one of the beauties of these kayaks is you can stand up in them. And there has been a few times, especially when setting a hook on a larger size fish, that I'm a little unstable. So it's good to have these leashes handy and on your gear, especially your $600 rod combo that you don't want to see going overboard. But I mean, that begs the dumb, the question, what kind of gear you want for a kayak, whether you want to go cheaper or more expensive, because when you're in a kayak, especially salt water, your stuff is going to get, it's going to get hit by waves and stuff. So you want to make that decision, whether you want to go with more expensive gear and have it last longer or cheaper gear that you're not going to really worry about if it falls overboard. Mm, speaking of, you know, trying to keep that salt water out right over here. We got a nice Daiwa. This is a seven foot rod, something like I like to use. Uh, we got a salt deck. So um, for under the $400 mark, again, something that's really sealed up here. This is something that with minimal um, maintenance will hold up a long time in the kayak, you know? Definitely. I feel like that's a pretty good compromise, you know? You can handle anywhere from 40 inch bass to oh yeah, decent size Albies with that, yep. for sure. Definitely. Yeah, you'll nay. What do you think about this one? Hmm. Going after small tuna fish in Cape Cod Bay yeah, in a all... kayak. What small tuna fish? There are no, <laughs> there are no small tuna in Cape Cod Bay. Um, it's only giants. Uh, I do not recommend that one bit. Um, recently, there was a YouTuber, Robert Field, who posted a video of one of his uh, kayakers in Panama hooking into a 400 pound black marlin and it took him 15 miles offshore. Don't, don't do that, please don't. Yeah. Not a good idea. Yeah, it's just, it's just not a good idea. You know, if you're targeting tuna, keep it to the, the fall sea kind. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of plugs are we throwing from a kayak usually? I could, I could talk about that for an hour. Yeah, we can go for days. I've got too many lures. Um, but I definitely think, I've, I basically use the same stuff all the time. You know, I think that you're going to be more effective fishermen if you've um, got more experience with the lures you throw mm -hmm. than just throwing a million of them, you know? Yeah, understand how a lure swims, if it handles current better. Mm -hmm where in the water column are the fish um but we'll just keep it simple for right now when i'm in a kayak i like i mean who doesn't love top water seven inch docks i don't like throwing the nine inch ones just because i don't have a rod big enough in the kayak to throw a nine inch dock that's usually my surf plug or i actually throw them in the canal believe it or not um i love magic swimmers what another really good lure i i feel like the action on that lure is great and there's another lure where it's pretty versatile in the fact that you can reel it fast, you can reel it slow, and they have a ton of variety in the size and the colors. 
and just the weights. So if the fish are on top, you can have a flutter one. If the fish are a little deeper in the water column, you can use a sinker one. Um, but general rule of thumb when I'm in a kayak, I'm, I'm mostly fishing jigs or Ronzi's or Savage Gears because I like fishing deeper in the water nice column. Thing. A little bright green Ronzi here with a, probably a one ounce jig on it. Yeah. Yeah, one and a half. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty versatile. I've had great success with the um, silver metallic Ronzi's. It's an absolute classic for me. Um, I like the eight inch or the six inch for schoolies like earlier in the mm -hmm. season is really good. But uh, yeah, I can't say enough about the Ronzi. And great jig head, great hook, so. Solid. Yeah, solid all around. Moving on to pretty much fresh water now. Mm. We'll uh, start off, what is your PB largemouth? Um, uh, I can, I didn't get a, I didn't get a weight on it. So I'm just going by the Ian McParland, the eyeball scale. I'm saying probably like seven, seven and a half, maybe. Being um, from South Jersey for most of my life, I didn't have access to really good bass fishing. So I'm going to say probably my biggest fish was six pounds in South Jersey, which is pretty decent. Um, I, ha I hope two larger fish this year on Cape. So I'm hoping that PB will come next year. Oh yeah, hitting those herring run ponds. Just exactly. put your hours in, man. It'll happen. What are you looking for for good kayak spots? Is it accessibility to the water? You know, good spots feeding into it. What are we talking about? Yeah, I think that's definitely. I know we keep on bringing up the herring runs. So that's like that's my number one way of choosing a freshwater spot. Like trying to target bigger fish. Mm -hmm. um, they're just gonna have a massive amount of bait in there. Um, good flow. Uh, also, um, shelter. You know, sometimes these ponds will have will have a hill on one side, It'll g give you a little bit more shelter, you know, but you don't have the wind blowing you around as much. Yeah. Um, for the saltwater side, I, yeah, generally when I'm fishing in a kayak, I usually use Google Earth to try to find spots. Um, just gotta be careful, you don't wanna be um, going on private property or whatever. But easy access to the beach. Um, there's a lot of boat ramps on the Cape, so just go there, just gotta be careful and just not be a Guggen about it. Yep. Good bass lures for kayak fishing in about 20 plus feet of water. Ooh. Lipless crankbait and a rattle trap is a classic. That's a, um, that's a good one. Football jig is a great one. I'm super fan of the swim jig. Uh, so I would run like an equivalently kind of size, um, maybe with like a medium sized Kitek on the back for like a paddle tail um, and or a dart spin. would be a good one too. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm just gonna go with the regular Kitek on like a half ounce jig head. That's one of my favorite lures for stripers, bluefish, weak fish, and yeah, largemouth bass too. Oh, definitely a big fan. Oh, now, definitely. What about the best winter lures, those colder months? Ooh, for the wi winter, um, that's interesting. So for winter time, I'm trying to mostly stick with live bait. Live bait is key for winter months. Um, but I know some people don't like fishing with live bait. Um, McPartland, he's a true sportsman in the fact that he really doesn't fish with live bait that much. Um, but if, we're, if I am fishing with lures during the winter months, um, jerk baits, jerk baits and lipless crank baits, or jigs. Um, this jackal, um, this one actually got me a five pounder already this winter. But uh, I like drop shotting too. This is a great way to um, have like a slow kind of finesse bite. Um, that'll work in these winter months when they get really lethargic. Um, and it works for multiple species, so you can do trout, largies, smallmouth. Um, when you're just like hunting for a bite instead of, you know, hunting for a monster, it's just nice to uh, break up the winter months in between the schoolies running here yeah. to uh, get something on, whether it's a big perch or whatever we gotta do. Wrap up. I don't. I didn't. Oh. No idea what that said. I, yeah. <laughs> My bad. That's all. Solid. But just uh, yeah, just. Wrap it's like it up. a small overview of uh, our essentials and whatnot for kayak fishing. Yeah. Just like that. But tell them to subscribe and like is. Oh on yeah. It's okay. So I got it. Got it. So it's rolling. So you guys just do it. All right. All right. We'll yeah. Just cut it out to like a picture and then we'll. Um, yeah. All right. Ready. Cool. So I think that concludes our um, video for today. Yep. Just uh, remember to subscribe and like and follow us on YouTube. And if, if you're local, please stop in the shop. And if you have any kayak questions, ask me, Ian, or um, Jake. Uh, we all have the 106 PDLs and we're all avid kayak fishermen. So, yep. I mean, you might see us out in the water sometime. Yeah, we could learn something from you guys too. So there's always uh, there's tips to be learned on both sides of these things. So. Do you have any questions or you have any videos you guys would like to see? 
please comment below. Um, Moneybag McP and El Cruncho. Boom, signing off. Take care. Have a great day, guys.